Okay, so um, in this little video, what we're going to do is we're going to have you get introduced to set theory. And set theory is extremely useful for calculating probabilities. And you've probably been introduced to sets earlier in your math career. Um, I think they're introduced during the elementary years, but they're not used very much. Um, and really, you know, a primary use for them that most people could find useful is in, in the calculations of probability. So it's maybe the first time you're getting into this in a long time. Um, you know, here's the essential question. How can you use set theory to help you calculate theoretical probabilities? And that's really what we're doing in this adventure is just understanding how this set theory can be related to probability. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to really just review um, and make sure we're on the same page when it comes to the vocabulary of sets. So what is sets? Well, it says over here that a set is a well-defined collection of distinct objects. Okay. So each object in the set is called an element of the set, and the set can be specified by writing its element in braces. For example, the set S of prime numbers less than 10 can be written S equals curly. See the curly braces? 2, 3, 5, 7. All the elements go inside, and then the closed brace. Okay. Now the number of elements in a set S may be written as N of S. Okay. So for the set of for the set S of prime numbers less than 10, n of s is equal to 4. Well, they've been given to us right here. Here are the prime numbers. Okay, now if we did that, you know, and we defined that s was the set of odd numbers, let's say less than 6, and then that would be the, the, the odd numbers less than 6 would be 1, 3, and 5, right? So n of s would be 3. And you get the idea, okay? Now the set with no elements is called the empty set and then you have the null sign this means null right here zero and or you can draw your curly braces and have nothing inside of there okay the set of all elements under consideration is called the universal set and is denoted by u we don't see that very often um, in a lot of the problems that we work on but it's good to know that following terms describe how sets are related to each other so set a is a subset of set b if every element of a is also an element of b and this is what it looks like this means this term right here this kind of u that's on its side means that a is a subset of b so let's make a little venn diagram here and i'll show you how this thing is going to look okay so we would have a space right so we're going to have our space here and it's sorry inside of our space is going to exist some set B. I'll call this B. Oh boy, I don't know if this is going to work. And then inside of B, but fully inside of B is A. So since A is fully part of B, this doesn't look very good for a B. I'll make the B bigger. Since A is completely inside of B, then we consider A to be a subset of B. That makes sense. Okay. Um, all right. Let's let's continue here. Turn that off. All right. The intersections of A and B. So now this is the intersection notation. Okay. It looks like an N. So the intersection of A and B is uh, the set of all the elements that are in both A and B. So let's go back to our diagram. I'm going to see if I can make this pen just a little bit thinner. Hold on. Okay, so let's see if this will work a little bit better. If I have, you know, a space, then I have set A inside of that space like this. There's A. Then I have set B, and it's inside the space like this. Okay, so this is all of B, and that is all of A. Then this in here is the that's the intersection okay so the intersection is written like this and it looks like it's it's those objects or those elements that fit into both a and b so you know, for an example let's say we're talking about all the girls in the school would fit in here and all the soccer players in the school are here and some of the soccer players happen to be girls and some of the girls happen to be soccer players so for it to be the when we're talking about the intersection of those two sets we're talking about 
only the kids in the school, right? Because inside of here are all the kids in the school. Only the kids in the school that are both girls and soccer players. So I like to, you know, really say and when I think of intersection. So I'm going to write the big and here. All right? They have to be both to be in the intersection. So that's kind of, I think that's kind of important to know. Now the union of sets is uh, the set of all elements in A or B. So let's draw the Venn diagram of that. Union has a U. I kind of like that because it looks like a U. So it helps me remember that's the union we're looking at. And this intersection, so in, I see that N in sound in the very beginning, so that kind of reminds me intersection, and I think N has the N sound, so this is the and, it has to be and both of them. So now let's draw the union, the union um, here, what that would look like. So let me get another set of colors. Okay, so I'm drawing out my space, okay, and I think I'm going to just use my frame of this from now on for my space. I won't even draw that anymore. But here we have, I'm going to use A, I'm going to pick another color for A. So here's A. A exists in this space over here. I'm trying to make it really thin, but here we have A over here. Okay, and then here we have different color for B. Here is B over here in this kind of blue color. There is B. So now, when we have the union, that is an or situation. So let me show you what that looks like. So in this case, we'd say either either this one here doesn't matter or that one there. I'm going to highlight that whole area. Shows if you're in A or you're in B, it doesn't matter. So I always think about it this way. This might help you too. I don't know. But union. When we get to when we talk about um, marriages, we talk about oh the blessed union of two parties, right? Two people who come together. That's what a union is. The joining together of two parties, right? So that's the union. Um, and when you think about when two people go to the bank and they're married and they trust each other and there's love and everything else. Well, okay, but theoretically, what happens is that the bank, they're able to trust each other enough to say, hey, let's have an or type account, which means either one of us can go to the bank and pull out money without having to bring the other party with them, okay? This and type of account at a bank would mean, you know, like you'd use this with a business partner where let's say you had you owned a business together and you said okay the only way for either of us to take money out of this account is that we both have to be present right partner a and partner b have to be present and if we are both present then you'll allow us to take money out of the account now, in banking terms i think a lot about banking terms i used to be a banker but in banking terms we would say that's an and account it requires both to be present the union is an or account. Either party can show up and it qualifies. It's a member of this set, right? So that's really what a union account is. So I'll write the word or here. Okay. So we're going to write or. Hey, wait a minute. Sorry. Or. So this is an or account here, okay? Now, lastly, we have the complement of A, okay? So here we have the space, right? Here's our space in here, and I said I'm not gonna draw it anymore, but that's the space where all the elements exist in there. And it's written like this, capital A, and it's the little c here, the little c, you can see it in the superscript. Like when we write x squared, where the two goes for the squared, we put a little c up there, and that means the complement of set A. So if I had in here set A, and here's A, it's all these, this group, then the complement to A would look like this. It would be all of this space that is not A. So an example would be, we'd say, oh, if out of all the kids at Kaja High School, right, um, we would say that if A represented the set of the girls in Kaja High School, then the complement to A would be everybody who's not a girl which hopefully is just all the boys. I can't think of anybody else that's not a girl or a boy. It'd have to be all the boys, right? Um, we could do the complement another way. Say there's the seniors, 
And then the complement would be everybody who's not a senior, the underclassmen, right? Who are not ready to graduate. So anybody who is not, if we defined set A as the seniors in the school, then the complement to the seniors would be everybody else. Now you remember complementary angles, right? They're special pairs of angles that when they come together form right angles. So complementary sets would be sets that when they come together fill the entire space, right? The set itself and then every other element that exists in the space is its complement. So that we have the set and then everything not in the set is its complement. So that's the idea there. So let's answer some questions. So first of all, it says, for any set A that exists, what is A and this symbol and that symbol? Well, what do those symbols mean? Remember, this is the empty set. That is null or the empty set. And this one here, is this union or intersection? Well, in, it's got the end shape, so intersection. So let's say we have two sets. Here we have, oh, let me get my marker out. Okay, okay, so now we have set A, and set A will say exists here, right? And then set B is completely empty, or, well, actually, the empty set is empty, so there's nothing in it, right? So now we ask, where do they intersect? So what is the, inter what is the intersection with any A and the empty set? The answer is the empty set, right? There is no intersection, so therefore the intersection, the set that composes this intersection would be empty too, okay? So we have the empty set over here, and we say, where do these two intersect? They cannot intersect, so therefore their intersection is the empty set. That says, recall that a probability experiment is an activity involving chance. Each repetition of the experiment is a trial, and each possible result is an outcome. The sample space of an experiment is the set of all possible outcomes. An event is a set of outcomes. So when all outcomes of an exp experiment are equally likely, the theoretical probability of an event A is given by probability A equals, and now I'm going to have to give you this right here, but it looks like this. It is the number of elements in A, where A is that event, right? divided by the number of elements in the space. We're going to practice this really close so you can kind of see it. That's the answer right here. It's given by n equals, and there should be, this should be right there, that fraction, but I, I couldn't get that to go in there in the HTML very well, so I'm just handwriting that in. So this is really important. And I think about, for example, um, uh, let's, do, let's do something a little bit, um, well, let's just, Let's, like I said, what we'll do is we'll consider all of the prime numbers. Okay, so the prime numbers um, between, one, on a number cube, a cube has six faces. So it's going to have the numbers one, two, three, that's a three, but not very good, four, five, and six. These are the, the numbers. So if I were to draw out a space with all of, and this is a good way to do it here, but I'm going to draw out a space with all of the events, the possible events. So remember, the sample space of experiment is the set of all possible outcomes. So I'm rolling a number cube, which has, you know, a cube has six faces, so there's six numbers on it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at, I'm going to define A and I'm going to define B. So let me, let me um, pause this for just a second and get a different. So A, A, event A is an even number. So let's draw a circle around all the, let, let's create a set A. So four would be in A, one would not, two would be in A, three would not, six would be in A, five would not because A is the set of the even numbers, right, that would be possible in this space, okay, which are the six numbers that, that could come up when we roll the dice. 
Now let's do B, we'll pick another color for that. So now B is rolling a prime number. So in case you didn't know, two is a prime number, one is not. Three is a prime number, six is not. Five is a prime number, four is not. So these are the prime numbers here, okay? So well, that's a little bit goofy, but you're gonna have to, you know, bear with me, that's the best I can do there. So let's try and calculate each of these. What would be the probability of A? Well, okay, probability of A. The number in A divided by the number in the set. So here we go. Um, and, and notice this is the notation, P, capital P, of, and then A, right? So we're calculating the probability of A. Well, A has how many in its number? One, two, three. So we would say that the answer here, let me get a different color. Well, I can use this, that's fine. The answer here is three over the number in the set. Well, one, two, three, four, four. there's six total in the set. So it's three over six, which obviously could be reduced and our, our good answer here would be one half, okay? So look at this next one. It says, what is the probability of the union of A or B? and B. So remember union, this is the marriage one where we trust each other, right? So we're saying actually that either party could show up and we'll consider that in the set, right? That if, if, if A comes alone, we're fine. If B comes alone, we're fine. If they come together, that's fine. They come anyway. So, so really this is the more inclusive set. It's the larger set. So let's see, one is not a member of either A or B, but two is, three is, four is, five is, and six is. So there are five here that fit into the union out of the six. So that's our probability of the union of the sets, okay? What about the probability of the intersection of the sets? The intersection, and this one is the one where the, you know, intersection is the and one. You have to be a member of A and B, so one is not A or B, four is not A and B, it is only A, three is not A and B, it is only B, five is only B, six is only A, two is in A and B, so there's only one number that is, um, you know, both in B, a prime number, and in A, an even number, so it's one out of six. Are you getting these right? What about the probability of the complement of A? The complement of A. Well, we knew there were one, two, three in A. So the complement in A is everything that is not in A, right? So that's gonna be one, right? Five is not in A, and three is not in A, okay? So the answer is there are three out of six. So if we rolled it, the sorry, if we rolled the dice, and we said, what's the probability that we would have the complement of A? Now, here's a little bonus question. How would we define the complement of A? Well, it's everything that's not in A. Let's go back to A. A is an even number. Well, if it's going to come up and it's not an even number, then the complement A would be all the odd numbers. Did you notice that? All the odd numbers, okay? So there it is. The probability um, of A is the probability of rolling an even number. So we've already done all of this. We've answered all these questions here. So I'm gonna kind of pause this and go forward a little bit. Okay, so we're still dealing with our set of six probabilities. I'm gonna draw those back out here. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five and six, okay? So we have our six possibilities. Now it says explain what the probability of S represents. Well, S was the space. It was the entire set. So if I roll the dice, what's the probability that one of these numbers would come out? Well, so we would have N of, remember we said, the probability, theoretical probability, is written as n of a over n of s, right? Well, in this case, we're defining a as s. So we would have n of s 
Oh, that is terrible. Over n of s. <laughs> and so in this case, because we defined, you know, we're trying to find the outcome of a is really equal to s. So we're going to say, so what's this? Well, the number in s is 6, and the number of s is 6 again. So actually, our answer is 1. Okay, the probability of this happening we consider to be 1. So what this means is we can write this as a percent. Sometimes we like to write probability as a percent. We would say that is 100. Oh, that's a terrible oh, zero. I don't know why it's like that, but here we go. We would say it's 100%. Okay? So it says, do we think that this outcome or this result is true in general? Well, yes, because we would always have n of s over n of s, and so the same number is always going to go on top of bottom. So the probability of an outcome existing is going to always be 100%, right, out of all the possible outcomes if we include any of them in the set. Okay? Now it says, you may have noticed in the example that the probability of A plus the probability of the complement of A equals 1, right? And we talked about that before. I kind of showed you, you know, a Venn diagram. We put A inside of it. And then I said, okay, here is A. And what makes it, that is just a, this thing is just goofy. What makes it, its complement is all this white space here, right? So between A and all the white space, it, it encompasses all of S. So that, that, it's written right here, see? If you take all of A, the elements in A, and all of the complements of the elements of A, you have all of everything that's in the set, no matter where it is in A or not, okay? So now here we go, we're gonna do this part here. It says probability plus of A plus the probability of the complement of A is equal to, it's right here, the probability, oops, let me write, oh gosh. Whatever reason, it didn't want to go that way. The probability of the set, which we know is equal to 1, right? All right, so all right, hold on just a minute. Let me just switch colors here. I'm going to erase that a little bit, try to redo it, just a sec. Okay, I accidentally uh, erased everything there. I didn't mean to do that, but let me just, let's just write out what this probability is. I'll be right there, just a second. N of A, do you need to go somewhere? You need to go somewhere? I'll be right with you, okay? N of A over N of S, right? And then this is plus N of A, the complement of A, oh, gosh, this is not a good tool I can see. N of the complement of A over N of S. Now, because these fractions have the common denominator, you can just put that all in the top. So, I'll write that here, over here. So, we would write N of A. I don't know why it doesn't want to write in that direction, but it sure doesn't. Plus N of, I think my, my computer hard drive is filling up, but this is N of A um, plus its complement over the common denominator N of S, which is equal to n of s over n of s. You can't see what the heck I wrote, but that's what I'm writing, and that's equal to 1. So really, when you add together the probability of an outcome and its complement will always equal 1. That's all it's really saying. And then obviously, you could just write it as the probability of an event is equal to 1 minus the probability of its outcome, Sometime, uh, or its complement. Sometimes it's easier to count the things that aren't in the group, right? And then figure it out. So let me give you an example here. So let's say that there were, I don't know, 100 kids in the school. And um, three of them, let's say, uh, played the violin. And they said, what's the probability of the kid that you will pick a kid at random that does not play the violin? And let's call the kids that do not play the violin A, all right? So then what we do is we'd say, do we have to count 97 of them, right, out of the 100? Well, what we can do is we can just say, how many do play the violin? That's three. So we would be able to do our math pretty easy. I'm going to try it one more time with this drawing tool. 
and hopefully this works, but I would say, okay, the complement to A is the three kids that do play the violin out of the hundred, right? Okay. Oh, gosh. And I, it's not going to work, so I'm going to have to find a better tool. So anyway, we would say 1 minus 3 over 100 is equal to, it's easier to find that it's 90. Seven. That's a nine. Move. Maybe if I move slower, out of one hundred. Yeah, that looks like that might be the trick is to move really slowly. So anyway, instead of counting up the ninety-seven, it's easier to think. Okay, let me just take away what's not in the group, and then we're left with the probability of what is in the group. So that's sometimes that's really what this is talking about. Okay, and here we have an example. Okay. Um, I think pretty much at this point, let me take my marker off, this example here pretty much is doing exactly what we talked about. We could make a table that shows all the possible um, outcomes of rolling a blue and white one, so you get one. Uh, I'm not going to walk through that with you. I'll let you actually work on some of these types of problems yourself, and I'll have you um, finish that on your own, but I think you can get the idea and you just need a little t time to practice this now. And I'm going to have a series of questions for you to practice these um, in our Edpuzzle video. Okay? So thank you very much.